This is Dr. Jaya Vijayan and I am giving you the briefing for protein assay effect of salt on protein content determination. This is the last practical. We already done uh, five other practicals for the course of uh, BSB 1402 or Biochemistry Level 3. And this is another practical. We already have a buret uh, protein determination method. This is another method for protein determination. In fact, there are uh, several methods meant for qualitative as well as quantitative protein determination. And for this one, it is uh, going to start off with qualitative protein determination. So what's the difference between uh, qualitative and quantitative? Uh, simply put, uh, qualitative is non-destructive while uh, quantitative is more destructive. And uh, usually qualitative do not have any values or numbers uh, coming about being measured. And quantitative as the name uh, uh, represent has a uh, value being measured. But in terms of the protein determination for this qualitative uh, uh, experiment, uh, one is actually giving number, but it's not a very uh, accurate uh, determination method. That is the we take the random method. And when it comes to non-destructive, uh, what's good about non-destructive is the sample is not destroyed. And therefore, you can reuse it after you have done the protein determination. Uh, for the quantitative, it's more destructive because you use either Burette reagent, you use Bradford reagent or Lowry reagent. So it binds to the protein and you no longer can use it. Uh, the non-destructive method, has, though it's not accurate or uh, more qualitative, it still, still has some use because it's used in the protein chromatography, uh, separation of protein, is still have relevance. Okay? So that's a bit of an overview on why uh, we use uh, this uh, qualitative and also uh, quantitative method for protein determination. And um, you also in, uh, need to know uh, in overview, the use of uh, different QED. Uh, depending on the UV range. If it's a UV range, normally 100 to 300 or 100 to 400 uh, Nm, then you are suggested to use a uh, quartz cuet rather than a uh, disposable plastic cuet or glass. Uh, so that also you have to have some uh, understanding or knowledge on deciding uh, which Use. Later, we'll discuss why to use the quartz cuet and uh, also need to understand the meaning of this content and concentration. They are having different uh, units. Uh, in fact, I already given in the uh, task to be done for report writing at the end of this uh, uh, manual uh, for you to differentiate between content and concentration. Right, uh, let's uh, move on to the next uh, page. Here we have a little bit of uh, videos that I can sort out for you in terms of uh, the experiments we are doing, uh, either qualitative or quantitative protein determination. You can find all the videos, uh, at least uh, some are sorted out for you. For instance, for qualitative, I couldn't find the Bethicker Granum, but uh, could find, uh, you know, the Warburg Christian method. Uh, this is something that I learned when I was in university, and I am uh, I can make comparison. It has very much similar principle and also uh, similar methodology, except the equation is different between Warburg Christian and uh, the random, but uh, should be sufficient for you to view this video to understand the uh, vertical random method. For quantitative, I uh, only managed to find uh, on Bradford essay, and there's one on 
highly viewed, so should be good. Please view it uh, before uh, pros, uh, going through the uh, practical itself for this practical six. So now we look into the uh, other videos, uh, two other videos uh, on Bradford as well. Uh, no videos for uh, Laurie, uh, no videos for Peterson. Uh, Peterson is a, a modification of a Lowry method, but uh, it's sufficient for you to do the experiment itself to understand on Peterson. And uh, also explained here uh, some of the, uh, uh, you know, what is Bitaker uh, issue and also Peterson protein determination uh, method. Okay, please uh, read it and then uh, we move on. Right, uh, now we look at uh, the uh, method itself. Uh, we have, uh, as I said, divided into qualitative and quantitative. And uh, qualitative, we are doing one of the uh, two that is absorbent at 280, we take her and Renum. And then quantitative, uh, although there are four, in fact, there are five uh, Burette method, uh, don't forget that. Uh, we are only considering to do in this practical Bradford as well as Peterson. Uh, Peterson is a modification of Lowry, so it's representative uh, to only do Peterson. The Beaconic Acid, uh, we are not doing, but uh, I recall I buy a kit and we did it for research. So kits are all the reagent, all the instruction is very clear, unlike a, a non-kit method where you have to make your own reagent. Uh, that's the difference. Okay. Right. Uh, we move to the next uh, part, which is uh, talking about the uh, Whittaker and Granum method, the qualitative procedure. So a bit of uh, overview, uh, you need to understand this will require you to use the ultraviolet via spectrum, uh, 200 to 300 or slightly more than 300 nm is the UV spectrum. For Whittaker, we use 280 nm as well as uh, 260. At 280, uh, we are targeting uh, the protein to have all the aromatic amino acid, uh, cyclic ring structures uh, that can be represented, represented by uh, three of the 20 amino acid, being tryptophan, phenylalanine, as well as uh, tyrosine. So if uh, either or all of these amino acid present in your protein, therefore, it can be detected by using Bitaker and Brenham, provided you do the detection at 280, as well as you will see, you need to do uh, well, M. I will uh, give you understanding why we do at 280 later. Right, and uh, the issue is, what if there is no protein with this uh, three aromatic uh, amino acid, then can we still detect you uh, the protein using this method? Uh, we will answer this by doing uh, three different samples, three different protein in the uh, experiments to come in uh, this practical itself. But it's quite uh, general if there is no none of these uh, three am aromatic amino acid. Hence, uh, this method will not be accurate uh, at all in detecting protein. Okay. Uh, kind of good to have this method because one thing is non-destructive, therefore you can use back the protein sample, but it is a, a rough estimate. It's not accurate like the other uh, methods which are quantitative and also using dye, uh, simply because issue of uh, uh, aromatic amino acid, whether it's present uh, in all proteins or not. So that's the take on uh, Whittaker and Brenham in terms of its uh, principles.
let's uh, move further and uh, you have to understand also about uh, the sensitivity uh, sens what is the meaning of sensitivity how low you can detect how uh, low concentration of a protein you can detect and uh, i can uh, say uh, quantitative method are not very sensitive uh, for we take a granum as that limitation and then uh, uh, you must consider using quartz squared uh, because uh, the light that goes into uh, will be absorbed or dispersed uh, the uv light uh, if you use a plastic cuvette or glass cuvette uh, at this uv range uh, there is also a special plastic, but so far I have not come across. But uh, we have in the lab the quartz cuvette. So consider using a quartz cuvette when you are working on Whittaker granum method at 380 as well as 260 nm uh, wavelength. And then uh, this whole paragraph suggests uh, that there is contaminants. Uh, if your protein is entirely of protein, uh, no problem. But if it's a uh, source from plant, plant has low abundant protein and also high abundance of this organic compound. Uh, these are all small compound, uh, phenolic compounds, alkaloids, tannin. They may disturb or interfere with your protein determination. So it has been suggested uh, to be entirely removed or partially removed using fractionation, uh, you know, chromatography method. Once it's removed, then it will be only uh, protein. But other macromolecules can still play a role in contaminants, and that is nucleic acid. But no worries, you don't have to go to the extent of uh, removing the nucleic acid. What you need to do is do the reading at 280 well at 260 mm using a spectral photometer whereby the 260 is absorbing uh, solely on nucleic acid while at 280 uh, nucleic acid as well as protein. So this equation will be useful in minusing of uh, what uh, interference caused by the nucleic acid and also only focusing on the protein. So once you've done the uh, reading, you can just put it in this equation. Hopefully you will get an estimate of the protein cost concentration, but the accuracy is uh, an issue where this method will not be accurate. In fact, it is not accurate at all. Uh, therefore, it uh, uh, sit in a qualitative method rather than a quantitative method, even though there are numbers obtained uh, on the absorbance. So now we move to the experiment itself for the Whittaker granum, and this is what you need to do when it comes to the experiment. We have uh, three samples. Hopefully, in the laboratory, we have all these three, pepsin, pepsin, and as well as BSA. They are all proteins, and what you need to do is prepare 0.1% weight over volume. I hope you understand what's the uh, meaning of weight over volume and uh, how to get about um, weighing 0.1% uh, and preparing in solution. Consider using volumetric flask for all this kind of preparation. Uh, previously, uh, we uh, it was written as 1% with volume, but then we realized uh, pepsin is a bit, uh, or is it casein? Uh, pepsin and casein, I think it was casein, was not very uh, easily dissolving at a high uh, amount. Therefore, we reduce it to 0.1% and it works uh, well enough. Uh, even if it's not dissolving, uh, especially casein, you are uh, uh, not to worry about it. You can just filter and carry on uh, conducting these experiments. 
Right. So once you have prepared, uh, hopefully uh, around 10 ml, you take 2 to 3 ml, not to exaggerate, into a quart skewer. Uh, just use a plastic uh, uh, pipette to put into quart skewer. Uh, if you have three cuvettes, put into three each one of the pepsin solution, casein solution, as well as BSA. And uh, consider uh, uh, zero the spectrophotometer once it's been set at 260 at first. Uh, to zero the or uh, in uh, auto zero the spectrophotometer, you need to use a blank. So the blank is having uh, no protein, so it has to be the solution that you have used to dissolve all this uh, free. Uh, leave it at that for you to figure out. So once you have zero the spectrophotometer and it's set at 260, measure all three and uh, write down uh, the absorbance reading. Next, you set the spectrophotometer at 280 and uh, again you have to auto zero the spectrophotometer and uh, followed by reading the new absorbance for all three of the protein uh, samples. Once done, you may then uh, use back the equation, this uh, equation. See you put the absorbent at 280, put the absorbent at 260, and these uh, numbers will help to uh, make as accurate as possible, even though this method is not accurate, to give the uh, concentration. Right. Next, you go back. Once done, you are to calculate the uh, concentration and uh, next, you have to calculate the percentage error. So, what is this percentage error and how do you come about with this percentage error? What you have done with the equation to calculate the concentration is uh, referred as obtaining the uh, concentration spectrophotometrically because you use the absorbance and use the spectrophotometer and uh, followed by equation, you got the uh, measurements done and then you calculate accordingly. But you also have to realize you have weighed the protein, these three protein you weighed uh, separately and that is referred as gravimetric uh, concentration uh, determination. Okay. So by using this 0.1% Hope you can then uh, calculate the concentration, which is referred as gravimetrically. It means you 0.1 gram in 100 ml. What will be the milligram per ml? So uh, given quite a bit there for you to figure out how to get gravimetrically. The gravimetrically is definitely is more uh, accurate than spectro photometrically. So if there is a huge variation by now you should know how to get the percentage error okay, i'm going to leave it uh, to that All right we now move on uh, to the other method that is uh, uh, considered to be lowry method but it has been modified uh, eventually on peterson i i have done a lowry method before and it's, it has a very high sensitivity compared to all other protein determination method. Hopefully, you can find the sensitivity for Lowry method and also include it. Looks like Lowry came about in 1951, and then this as well as a uh, few others have modified it, uh, made it much more uh, faster uh, with a uh, little bit affected by sensitivity but uh, definitely can do the job uh, much faster uh, with some uh, accuracy. Okay? It is also quantitative, uh, as such is a destructive method, method meaning uh, dye will uh, you know, indefinitely uh, cause
cause uh, foliage of the sample, so you cannot use the sample any longer. So uh, this is the uh, method uh, concern, but before we consider the method, we have to prepare the uh, reagent. Uh, I'm not sure to call it Peterson reagent, but I can uh, say it's also Lowry uh, reagent. Okay? So looks like uh, the Peterson reagent has uh, some uh, reagent or dye that can react, uh, find out, it has copper 2 plus, find out what is it reacting to the protein and therefore forming complex. Uh, the copper and the protein will complex and hence will cause a change in color. The more protein uh, is found, the more uh, darker the navy blue color will be. And this method requires the spectrophotometer to be set at 750 nm. Uh, this also means you can decide on what QET to be used, what type of QET. Uh, is it quartz or is it disposable uh, plastic uh, based on that uh, wavelength? Right, to prepare the reagent, you need to have a preparation of PPC, 10% uh, SDS. Uh, 0.8 molar of uh, sodium hydroxide and also folin sulfur 2. Well, I can say these three, once combined, will be known as uh, reagent A. Then this one will be called as solution, or you know, this one A solution, this one B solution later in the manual. So to prepare one, two, three, start with one CTC. You need these three ingredients in that percentage and has already been calculated for you. 1.2 gram uh, weighed out and then using a volumetric flask, uh, dissolve all this in uh, water and uh, top it up to 100 ml. That should be sufficient and please don't forget to fill the volumetric flask uh, once you put stopper upside down several times so uh, more on the region itself uh, also the second one 10 percent sds uh, 10 gram and then uh, using volumetric plus prepare 200 ml with water uh, a bit of caution uh, or precautions been uh, said there uh, do uh, keep it in room temperature because if you put it in the uh, uh, fridge, it will become hardened. It doesn't matter you put in more than zero degrees Celsius, four degrees Celsius or so, it will be hardened. Okay. And then you have also preparation of 0.8 molar sodium hydroxide. You supposedly should use this equation to calculate, uh, you know, this equation been taught to you uh, the relative molecular weight of sodium hydroxide but no worries it's already been calculated uh, you may want to check with this equation whether the calculation or the amount given is uh, correct and then uh, weigh it out it comes in small pellets and then uh, put in a volumetric flask and then dissolve in there and uh, top it up to 100 ml of uh, water also says uh, be careful you need to be rapid uh, because once it uh, get exposed to air it uh, you know uh, changes to become sodium bicarbonate but once you tightly cap it it should be uh, sufficient for the experiment that you're doing uh, today right and then uh, folin kolkatu phenol reagent this one uh, comes in a bottle. You just have to take uh, in an amber bottle, if I uh, can remember well. Take one ml and then add with five ml. Uh, that should be already fulfilling the ratio. Just how much you want to prepare. If you think one ml of uh, folin kalkatu is not enough, uh, make it into two and this one uh, to ten. So you have twelve ml prepared. 
that uh, sense. And then you also have the uh, the reagent A, as I said, reagent A. Uh, that one has uh, three things you prepared just now: one, two, three, as well as water. And they say prepare it in ratio one, 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 one. So we have the CTC, SDS, NOH, and distilled water at the ratio of one, one, one. So if uh, using 1 ml, 1 ml of all, uh, not enough, suggested to use 10 ml, therefore uh, 10 ml plus 10 ml plus 10 plus 10, 40 ml will be prepared on region A. Again, uh, must ensure uh, correct mixing or vortexing. Uh, and then you have a B region prepared with folin Pulper 2, already been to you just now, the amber bottle has its polin region. Take one ml and add with five ml of water and done with one more two ml with ten ml of water. Right? Uh, we now move on. So, uh, one of the things that need to be uh, obtained is this 0.2 milligram per ml for BSA for the Peterson method. Uh, so, uh, how do you get this uh, uh, 0.2 milligram per ml? Especially so, how do you weigh 0.2 milligram? I can tell you it is difficult to weigh 0.2 milligram using uh, ultra balance. Uh, weighing balance uh, may have difficulty to weigh up to 0.2 milligram. Therefore, suggested for you to use uh, this method whereby uh, you start off with 0.2 gram uh, 0.2 gram you can weigh easily and then using a volumetric flask uh, make it into 10 ml uh, at the end of it you would have achieved uh, 20 milligram per ml and having 10 ml total uh, solution uh, given a little, uh, a few videos, two videos for you to understand about using this ultra balance or analytical balance in case you have uh, issue understanding how to use a ultra uh, or analytical balance. It's not same as a, the common balance. And also you can watch on how to prepare standard solution using plus in this video. So go ahead and watch it so you understand uh, much better. And then uh, once you prepare this uh, uh, 20 milligram per ml, this is called uh, like a serial dilution or you know stepwise uh, dilution. We go from 20 milligram to become 4 milligram, where from this 20 milligram we take 2 ml and then using volumetric plus become uh, 10 ml with and uh, you have to also ensure uh, mix well and therefore you already achieve 4 milligram. So you started with 20 milligram, become 4 milligram, but it doesn't stop there. You use this 4 milligram and you follow through by taking 1 ml and then uh, diluting it to become uh, 20 ml with a volumetric glass and mixing it uh, by shaking well or vortex. And hence, at the end of this uh, three step, from 20 uh, milligram per ml, you would have uh, come to 0.2 milligram per ml. So let's uh, look at it. So you can see from 20 milligram, uh, you would have uh, finally reached uh, 0.2 milligram per ml, uh, which is the target uh, you need to achieve. For that, we can use it to uh, go to the experiment itself, the Peterson method. So what you need to do is uh, follow this table. You need to have six test tubes. Uh, if you want to use uh, append off tubes, which are, can hold up to 3 ml, or if uh, uh, some student decided to use the uh, disposable uh, plastic uh, cuvette itself. So they have uh, one, two, six, 
and then they put everything that is uh, recommended into the web. So what is recommended to be put here? You need to firstly put the BSA solution which you prepared, uh, put zero in the first uh, uh, web, followed by 0.2 ml which is equivalent to 200 microlit using a micro pipette. This one 400, 600, 800, and 1000 microlit. Next, you do the same for the distilled water as been recommended here. The row, and then add the reagent A, which you have prepared, uh, putting 1 ml for all the six cubes or six uh, wet. Uh, as suggested, vortex them thoroughly ensure you vortex thoroughly and then leave it for five minutes after five minutes put reagent b uh, around uh, well exactly 500 microlit again mix and leave for 10 minutes so now all the steps are done uh, after 10 minutes you uh, don't have to worry you have a certain uh, time uh, to do the spectrophotometric reading uh, don't have to be worried. You have to do it immediately. You can queue with uh, other groups. First come, first serve. And then you set the spectrophotometer at 750. And then you have to auto zero the spectrophotometer. Uh, I told you uh, blank is the one without protein. Therefore, you can use the one to auto zero. I already made it like, you know, zero absorbance here and then uh, use the rest of the uh, wet with uh, each of the uh, representation to know what is the measurement you should be able to fill up this uh, table with uh, the absorbance readings once done also you need to to build the graph you need uh, you know you can build a standard curve uh, so this uh, by right should be absorbance. This should be the content. So <clears throat> now you need to know how to get the content. This is called standard curve. Uh, to know the content, I can only uh, give you a hint. You have used 0.2 milligram per ml. So what? will be your calculation to get all this based on knowing that you use this much of volume, increasing volume for the protein based on the stock, which is 0.2 milligram. So what will be the PSA protein content uh, you can calculate and then you can build this graph. Okay? So uh, that's on the Peterson method. So we go to the third method, uh, which is a popular method in many labs, even in my lab. It is a, a dye assay, so you need to prepare the Bradford reagent. And it appears to be uh, detecting uh, any uh, protein sample which has negatively uh, charged amino acid or hydrophobic in uh, amino acid in that you know protein and uh, the wavelength that the reagent and the protein once it complexes uh, best read at 595 so again please decide on the type of QA to be used at 595 this is the sensitivity range you may want to compare with uh, uh, other method done here which one is uh, more sensitive and if you observe carefully, this uh, next uh, procedure is actually same as uh, in the previous method uh, given. Uh, this one is actually the same. Sorry, only press the video. There. Okay, so uh, it's actually the same. Uh, what I'm saying is, there's no need for you to repeat it because uh, previously you have already uh, prepared 
20 ml uh, with 20 ml of 0.2 milligram per ml of uh, this BSA it's more than sufficient to be used for even uh, preferred method so no need to uh, repeat it again uh, this whole thing already done for you already uh, more than enough uh, for this as well so uh, before we start the Bradford method, you need to prepare the uh, reagent, Bradford Kumasi Blue reagent, uh, Bradford reagent in short. You have to take away 0.1 gram of this uh, Kumasi Brilliant Blue G dye. Don't go and use the, there's also R dye. If you use the R dye, it won't work for Bradford uh, experiment. So ensure that you take the right bottle that says Blue G. And then uh, you add roughly 50 ml of absolute ethanol. Absolute ethanol is 99% uh, or more of ethanol, uh, no other contaminants. But I think we already tried with 95% ethanol, it still works. So roughly take 50 ml and then dissolve this 0.1 gram. And eventually, if you want to use a volumetric class of 100 ml, you can uh, top it up with ethanol uh, to make this Kumasi Brilliant Blue G to be dissolved. Hopefully, all it will not be totally uh, dissolved. There will be next uh, prepare this uh, 100 ml of 98% or autophosphoric acid, they call it. It comes in a bottle. So just uh, uh, take 100 ml and add to the a uh, therefore we proceed we have around uh, 200 ml just now uh, around 200 ml take both of those ingredients uh, put in a one liter volumetric flask there is a one liter volumetric flask and then top up the meniscus with uh, still water uh, and then uh, obviously you need to stir it uh, we normally stir such a big volume using magnetic bar uh, stirrer. You put a magnetic bar and then stir. So do it for some time. Uh, sometimes uh, some uh, some of the uh, people they actually stir overnight. I remember I'm doing it for overnight and only after that filtering. Uh, you can filter using a Wattman uh, paper, uh, but that's a bit low. So it's been suggested to use a Buckner apparatus and for you to understand what is Buckner apparatus uh, uh, called filtration, I also given a YouTube video. So uh, that means you already have the Bradford region ready. Therefore, we do the experiment itself and you follow this table. For the experiment, you have to have the 0.2 milligram per ml, which you already done with the Peterson method, sufficient. Uh, again, uh, uh, I would ask you to use the uh, what you call uh, uh, QED for this as well, but remember the QED only has 3 ml capacity. So back to basic, it's better you use uh, glass or plastic uh, cube okay because uh, at the end of the thing you have to add 5 ml of uh, breadfruit reagent so they call macro assay breadfruit uh, assay uh, there's also micro breadfruit assay we use only 1 ml of uh, breadfruit reagent but for this experiment uh, better to stick to what has been suggested right so do the same thing six uh, test tubes Add first the BSA uh, with this on volume uh, using a micro pipette. You need to be very accurate that will decide on a good graph or not. Uh, distill water and then add Bradford reagent 5 ml. Mix it well, leave it for 10 minutes. So it's much more simple compared to the other uh, method of Peterson and in fact even Lori. And then after uh, 10 minutes, again, you will see uh, color changes, more protein, more change of color. Uh, you need to measure the change. 
So you auto zero the uh, spectral photometer, which has already been set at 595 using, using the first test tube, which has no protein, and then get all the reading measurements. Hopefully, you can use this reading as well to build a standard graph uh, based on you know, all the reading that you obtain. You can actually use the Excel, Microsoft Excel, to determine the R squared. Uh, so, get the R squared value, see how accurate it is, and also based on the graph, you can get the y equals mx plus t equation if there is any c at all if it goes to the zero through the origin the y equals mx okay so that's why they say uh plot uh, absorbent value versus uh, content which is this one all right we are coming to the end of the briefing uh, looks like this also you need to find the and but I think you are very uh, been, been brief uh, well enough just now in the Peterson method about the content calculation. We also have uh, for the report writing some uh, question or task to be conducted. I try to change the uh, uh, task as much as possible from one uh, semester to the other to give you some challenges uh, uh, not the same. <laughs> Okay, so uh, define the difference between concentration and content. Hopefully, you can find out and uh, let me know. Uh, use your standard curve to determine the concentration of unknown. Okay, so far you have built a standard curve for uh, Peterson as well as uh, uh, Bradford, uh, but not for Whitaker and uh, Granum. The one has no standard curve. Is it possible to use this to know the concentration of uh, unknown uh, sample which you don't know how much is the concentration can you use the standard curve to know it uh, so please uh, describe how is it done okay so that's the second task or question and then the third one is which is uh, you know directly related to the title of this practical six uh, effect of salt according to this uh, the cations uh, such as sodium, potassium, magnesium, if it's found in your protein sample, it's sort of like affects, so it's a contaminant and affects the reading, accuracy of reading. So how can you develop or come up with method to take into account the effect of these uh, ions that's been found next? So I just want you to come up with experimental design rather than actually doing the experiment and proving that this uh, ion affect the measurement absorbance if you were to do it uh, having no ion and with ion okay. so with that i come to the end of this briefing uh, it's quite a lengthy briefing 40 minutes so i have uh, saved uh, 40 minutes of uh, three hour practical uh, hopefully you uh, view the video before coming to the practical session altogether. Thank you.